In this video, we'll look at a comparison of results with various meshes of a cantilever beam model in ANSYS Workbench 14.5. The simple cantilever beam model is shown above. It is a simple square beam, 19.05 millimeters square, 260 millimeters long. One end is fixed completely. The other end has a 1500 newton load applied in vertical, vertical direction. Standard textbooks equation are shown below. The lowermost shows the moment of inertia, which are plugged into the equations above. Stress turns out to be 338 megapascals, and the deflection at the tip turns out to be 4 millimeters. And now we'll look at the finite element model in ANSYS. The same model was used with a variety of mesh types. The first mesh is made of beam elements. Here we have a second order hex mesh created with the ANSYS defaults. The next is a first order hex mesh and that's created with the automatic method dropping the element mid-side nodes. Here we have a second order tet mesh because the geometry is sweepable, had to override with the patch conforming option to force tetrahedrons. The next is a first order tet mesh, again using patch conforming method and dropping the mid side nodes. Starting with the shell elements, we have a second order quad created using a multi zone mesh control. I've elected to keep the mid side nodes because the default is to drop. Here's a first order quad using the default mid-side node setting. Here's a second order try mesh control, again changing to keep the mid-side nodes. Next is a first order try mesh control. And here at the bottom we have a one millimeter size control applied to this first order tet mesh control. Again dropping the mid-side nodes. Here are the 1500 Newton loads applied to the end of the beams. The fixed support for the beam element, solid surfaces, and edges of the shell elements. A look at the displacement results shows some outliers. This first order tet mesh shows a considerably lower displacement than the surrounding models, as does the in-plane bending tri-mesh in the shell elements. A look at the first order tet mesh on the bottom with the refined one millimeter mesh shows some surprising results. The displacements are falling in line with most of the others, unlike the 10 millimeter mesh above. Normal stresses show similar outliers. The first order tet mesh and the first order tri mesh within plane bending. Note that the first order tet mesh with the refined mesh, though higher, seems to be much more in line with the others. A look at the beam results shows a similar pattern seen in the majority of the models. In the results summary table, I've highlighted the results with best correlation, other than the beam element model. The first order hex on the solid elements shows good results, as does the first order quad on shell elements. Note that the meshes ANSYS will create by default show reasonable results. However, you have to be aware that although it will try to make quad meshes for mid-surface models, geometry situations lead to creation of tri-elements in most cases. The much refined first order tet mesh shows much improved results at a penalty of roughly three orders of magnitude in the DOF count. In conclusion, first order hex elements provide the best correlation to theory for solid meshes when compared against other models with different elements of the same mesh density. A reduced number of degrees of freedom for first order hex elements does lead to solution efficiency. 
However, ANSYS meshing capabilities can make hash meshes challenging and it's often not worth the effort and second order TET elements are most often used. First order quad elements provide the best correlation to theory for shell elements in both the in and out of plane loading scenarios. But you should watch critical areas of your model for quad element shape quality and the existence of tri elements because as seen in the example, tri elements are overly stiffed under in plane loading. First order TED elements are overly stiff with conventionally reasonable mesh density. Note that the higher mesh density leads to more realistic results, but a huge price is paid in computational efficiency. Meshes comprised of first order TED or solely tri elements generally have no place in everyday structural analysis. A few disclaimers of note for this simple comparison. Torsion effects were not considered in the simple example and certain situations not shown can necessitate the use of different elements and this may include different curvatures of shell elements leading to the need for first and second order element decisions. Thank you for watching and have a great day.